I don't know what it was. He's walking upright like a man. Sightings in and around Vermont. Bigfoot sightings across New England have been reported. Red glowing eyes, about seven feet tall. Red eyes, big old fang claws coming out through. Three inches long, you know, just sharp as they could be. There has been another UFO sighting flying over the Royal Botanic Gardens. There are 500 UFO sightings in the world every month. The truth is out there. So, I want to take the first 20 minutes. Uh, well, you know how okay. we usually use the first 20 minutes to complain about shit. Yeah, yeah, So, I didn't talk to you about this at the beginning of the episode, but I want to talk about this now. Okay. I'm mad about Double Masters 2022. I... I don't... What is that? So, Magic the Gathering periodically will do... Will do, uh... Will do, like... Reprint sets, right? Yeah. So, this is the set. Um, And, you know, okay. There's a lot of really cool shit in there. A lot of shit I really want. Right? I yeah. picked up some of it. Right? So... Because I'm basically just trying to make a commander, like, I'm trying to get one of a lot of cards for commander so I can just make decks as I want to. Yeah, um, that makes sense. And I have a I have a rats deck that I have a lot of fun with, right? But, so, one of the cards that's really nice in rats in any tribal deck is Cavern of Souls, yes. which you might remember that because it came out when we were actually playing in Avacyn Restored. And... I totally sold my copy of of yeah. Cavern of Souls to to buy fucking card fight Vanguard cards. <laughs> I remember that, which I only have re regrets for now. To tell you the truth, uh, because I gave away most of my card fight Vanguard cards because they were literally worth nothing. Um, yeah. they were cool they were looking, worth, though. They were, but they were worth less than what I paid. I just spiked up the value margin. of Cavern of Souls. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, uh, it's it's a $63 card. Well, it was $100 back in the day. It's um, on, uh, so on TCG. It's up to sixty-eight seventy. Yeah. So, they've dropped the price a little bit by reprinting it. But you see, the problem is, uh, if you click on the art, on the card and look at the art, uh, like, at, look at the bottom left corner the cards. Foil. Yeah. Uh, it's, uh, there are... There are 331 cards in in Double Masters. Uh -huh. So what that means, and what that means is there's a fuck ton of rares and mythics. Okay? Cool, right? Except most of them are fucking jank as shit. And they're not worth anything. Yeah. And, 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 and the packs for the most basic draft booster is like 17 bucks a pack. The collector's That's... booster is 63 fucking dollars. I'll have to go through my stash of, of cards that I didn't sell well, because most of them are on cards, but I know I have, um, Avison still. Um, so I'll, cause I, I, it, everyone I knew had two of them. I know nobody didn't have two. So I, I might have a couple of caverns of souls. no, no. Brandon, it was you. I got one and Nick had them because Nick was always like Nick good had, at Nick, getting. Did Nick have like. Nick, Nick, Nick. Almost a play set. Did he have three? I don't know, but Nick Nick has always been very good at turning cards into money. So. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Which if he, I always listened to him when we were like opening boosters and he was ever like, oh, you should sell that. Like I just went right up to the counter and sold it right away every time. If you see this, oh wait, did they drop? Did the price on this like significantly <coughs> drop? Because if the price on this significantly dropped, I know what I'm doing after this, and that's that's going to buy this card. <laughs> <laughs> um, but but basically, what they did was they tried to make a a set that was like draftable, yeah, right. But it's also a reprint set, so there's like really very needed reprints in the set, right? Mm -hmm. But they made it draftable, which means there's a bunch of draft chaff in the set. So if you buy the like premium booster packs, you could either A, get a $240 pack, or B, get a pack that's worth like literally nothing. <laughs> it's, it's worse than the gas it took you to get to the store. Yes. 
So it's it's like high, incredibly high swings in terms of like oh. what's worth money and what's not worth money. So it's it's great. I'm super super thrilled with it. I wanted to buy packs of it, but to buy a booster box is like three hundred dollars. Do they have? Does Drop.com have any of these? Oh, I don't know. Maybe because they if well the last are you few talking times about mass drops? Boxes, yeah, they mass drop rebranded to just drop. Um, oh. but the last time I bought boxes, I bought it off mass drop because you got it like a, a a deal, a pretty good deal. For all um, I know, so given given what's happened since COVID, it's probably all bullshit. Uh, I don't see magic. Magic has gotten like annoying. Like it's gotten singles have gotten cheaper, but it's harder to like get sealed product i feel like yeah they haven't had any um magic stuff on drop since the last thing i see is war of the spark as a request and then they had 2020 uh core set kits oh, uh and, and booster boxes so they haven't had magic for like two years i've been i've been thinking about war of the spark a lot lately i've been thinking about it a lot I've been wishing I bought You've more been packs. Thinking about it a lot? Yeah, I wish I bought more packs. There's some really cool shit in there that I used to because I played a lot of arena at the time, but I didn't have yeah. uh paper magic. I still have it on my computer because I'm always interested in just checking. Oh, I have arena. And then, and then leaving. I, I don't I don't delete arena. I had well now now that there's historic like you can just play historic, I just play historic now. Cause standard's too expensive okay. to play. <laughs> yeah. Which is pretty much the standard for literally all magic the gathering but um <laughs> it, it it is it's just too fucking expensive to play to pay magic Th this is this is yeah. weird this shot the drop has changed considerably it has i i liked i was a big fan of mass drop i have not bought anything and i'm not sure how i feel about drop even though it looks similar it's uh, changed. It's still mostly keycaps. <laughs> Pretty much. I mean, well, that's what really Mass Drop is all about. Well, Mass, that's where I got all my, like, cool pens, Magic the Gathering cards, um, my, my in-ear monitors. Actually, this condenser mic I got really? from, uh, uh, Mass, yeah, yeah, it was from Drop. Because I was like, when you do the comparisons, some of them it's an okay deal, and some of them is a really yeah. good deal. This mic was a really good deal. Although we have a we have a the, mutual uh, friend who bought something from Mastrop and it never showed up. Wait, what? Yeah. He uh he bought um a Gundam off of Mastrop and it like never showed up. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Weird. Yeah, the only issue I ever had with them is um when I tried to buy a a bomber jacket and uh it, it it's have they are their sizing i wouldn't buy clothes from them because mm. it was very too small but other than that i haven't had any uh, oh, issues so that reminds me uh we're gonna play a game brandon and that game is did yes. john get ripped off because i okay. bought stuff from aliexpress <laughs> <laughs> the 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 answer is yes. Well, we're gonna find um, out. We're gonna find out. Uh, AliExpress does have a return policy where if, if they fucked you, you can return it. So I took a gamble. Let's see if it pays off, Cotton. The uh, I was on AliExpress not that long ago because I wanted designer clothes, but I didn't want real designer clothes. I thought it would be funny to have like a bunch it's of basically the same stuff. price. Yeah, the problem is you, you can't buy just one. You have to buy, like, 200. So, like, I wanted, like, Versace, like, s sandals or whatever. But then I had to buy 200 of them. So I'm like, there's really no. Well, that's how you get. Unless I'm going to New York City. That's how you get, like, Frolexes. Yeah, well, that's where, where I mean, if the, the, if you buy anything from a New York City corner off a blanket, guess where it's coming from? I don't know. It's real, uh, right? It came from Fifth Avenue. Yeah. It came from Fifth it came from a sack on Fifth Avenue, not Saks <laughs> Fifth Avenue. That's a small difference, but we'll overlook that. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, anytime you're buying just shit from a guy in a in a sack, <laughs> I mean, you can, tell your friends you got it at Saks Fifth. They'll uh, they'll God believe. God damn it, you. Brandon! 
Oh <laughs> God, I'm dead. That was oh. that was too much. So, so there's I'll well, get into the episode. I just want to get this out of yeah. my system because it impressed me. I'm sure no one else will care. But I had a dream. This was two nights ago. I dreamt that I was at the farm stand I used to, mm -hmm. to work in. And in this dream, I was like chasing around a weird smell and it eventually became overwhelming. Mm. And I woke up. And you Your know what baby? it was? It, it was me. I farted so bad. I, it showed up in my dream and then woke me up. Brandon. Brandon. It was gnarly. You use a sleep apnea machine, a CPAP machine too, right? Oh God! I did. I did. It was that gnarly. <laughs> John. So the CPAP doesn't like vent in clean air from outside. It okay. Just pumps the so it like wandered over to the machine, which is only you know a few feet over from me, and then the machine just sucked it in and just increased the pressure and vented it directly into my throat. <laughs> the machine was like, "You, you get punished for this." Have yeah. a punishment, yeah. you fucking animal. Yeah. yeah. Oh. <clears throat> so if you can't tell by now, uh, with me coughing directly into the mic, uh, welcome to Cryptopedia, an exploration of the myths and legends that haunt the human mind. Each week we'll take you on a journey exploring the mysteries of the world, tackling the tales of monsters, folklore, the paranormal, and that thing that definitely lives under your bed. I'm Brandon. I'm John. And for me, it's a lot of cat hair. It's mm. under your bed. That same, actually, there's, there's. If you want to know a secret, mm. that I can't fit under no. my bed, and my arms are too short to reach past the middle mm -hmm. point. So there's there's some hairballs that are just forever under the bed. I mean, I can't get. I to have them. I have just like a regular bed frame. I don't have any like wooden bed frame, so like it's really easy to move my bed frame. Yeah. Um. So I can pretty much just move my bed out of the way, and I have done that. I can't move my bed. I've given um, up. I've given it's... up on my guest bedroom though because that's Dakota's room, and like the amount of hair that's constantly in there is just like, it's oh. it's not worth it for me to fight this anymore. Yeah, just mm -hmm. give into it. Just give into it. Um, so this week we're going to cover by a uh, popular vote in the Jackalopes channel, uh, ghost, beef. ghost beef. Ghost beef. Now, are we um, are we talking uh, ghost excited. beef as yep. in something that you can eat, or ghost beef as in it's relating to a cow, or or it's, it's related or to a cow? Is it, is it beef between two families that continues as ghosts? It's it's it's. I mean, if you can perform a ritual to make the ghost cow corporeal, then you can eat it for sure. Have some have some ghost steak. I I mean, there's always room for ghost, I guess. Yeah, always room for Although the ectoplasm, That's all ectoplasm is just basically cum, so. It's yeah. ghost cum. That's how that works. Um, so I'm also excited to say that one of the sources this week is uh, the New Jersey.gov Department of Parks and Forests. So I, I, can, I'm just can, excited. So we're going to start. Can you hit me with this, this, yeah. this, source, this link? Because I need to look at this because that's. That's horrifying. It's why it's, scroll, 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 scroll. Well, oh. no, no, I don't have access to the, the the episode, but I'm horrified that. No, actually, you know, you know what? I spend a lot of time in. It's in the. I folder. spend a lot of time in New Jersey. I get it. Oh, there it is. Ghost beef. Let's. It's there. I'll. Uh, I got I'll it. just I got copy it. and paste that in the it. chat too. It. Yeah, it's the first link all the way at the bottom. <clears throat> so we're going to start with the Griggstown cow. In 1972, reports of a cow wandering Wait. the area near Lock 9, known as Griggstown, uh, of the Delaware and Raritan Canal spooked more than a few hikers and hunters. It's unincorporated. You should know. I also have... What's that it mean? means that it's not a part of a... It's not a part of a town. Um, I've driven through it. Okay. Yeah. Oh, cool. I've you might have seen uh, a no. ghost cow. Did you see any phantasmal uh, cows? No, I just saw no. a lot of depression. That's Jersey. Uh, the creatures seemed to appear only during foggy nights or misty mm. days. Uh, when there was a sighting, searchers never found as much as a hoof print or a cow pie where the creature was seen. It does ghost uh. poops. Uh, puzzled by the lack of tangible evidence, Griggstown visitors decided that it must be some sort of ghost cow. Um, yeah. What became the legend of the Griggs Count 
Grigstown cow circulated throughout the Millstone River Valley. Uh, amusing as it was, not everyone took the phantom cow very seriously. Local residents were sure it must be a joke or some feeble attempt at an urban legend. Uh, sightings were infrequent along the towpath and uh, the surrounding floodplain. And also towpath, I think that's where like you tow boats, like down a lock like is a, my thing. Like, so we like have are, some, you talking, uh, are you talking about like, like the... the the Erie Canal or the Donkeys Canal or whatever, yeah. where it's like you have a lock yeah stuff and, like that. Okay. So, yeah, yeah. So I think that's what they mean by towpath. Okay. That makes sense. Um, all these witnesses were a handful of questionable, blurry uh, photographs, which weren't very convincing. Uh, and this has the fingerprints of an urban legend all over it. Uh, but much to my surprise, uh, this suspicious specter was in fact corporeal so cattle. So where's the where are the pictures? I want to see these pictures. Where, where are these pictures? Uh, it, listen, man, maybe I couldn't find any, or the New York, Jersey Department of Parks and Recs is lying to me. I want to I want to see these. I want to see these basically what are basically cum smears on a on a piece of photo paper. I mean, there's one way we can compare that and see what that would really you know, look like. Now I'm now I have an idea for a show. <laughs> <laughs> you get a people bunch of people to come on photos, right? It's, you scan that. You scan those cummy photos. Then you get a bunch of people who are credulous about ghost photography, right? And you just show them a bunch of them yeah. and try and figure <clears throat> out how many of them they think are ghosts. So let's do a spin-off all right, of The Watchmen. So it's going to be the Raw Shock film, but it starts with the Pornhub intro. And The Watchmen re- re- literally just watch you. I think I've got that sound bite. You do, because you put too. it in an episode once. Mm-hmm. I did. Um, on the morning of November 23rd, 2002, a call from a New Jersey Water Authority employee came to the DNR Canal State Park office in Somerset, reporting that the elusive cow had not only been spotted, but much like the old lady from Australia set on bringing her potatoes to Ireland, reference uh, episode 97, The Gorilla Ghost, oh. um, was lying helpless in a ravine not far from the Grigstown Lock area of the park. I mean, to be <laughs> fair, if I got anywhere near a ravine, I'd probably be lying helpless in it too. That's why you're not allowed near the ravines. It's true. It's true. We we have to keep you on a leash like mm-hmm, a toddler. Mm-hmm. It's these are just uh, facts. The Township, I also have a collar. A sh- it is I have just a shock facts. collar that if I leave my yard by too much, it it sends me back. <laughs> There's, it's also if you if you say the word transformers one too many times, it gives you a nice little zip. Uh, in the Franklin Township Policeman Department, Grigstown Fire Department, New Jersey Fish and Wildlife, and the DNR DNR Canal State Park. A uh, local farm and dairy community and concerned park patrons. It's a lot of people. That's a lot of people. Like that's like they're like, fuck. There hasn't been this much. There hasn't been this much excitement since the fucking Walmart went in. It's like an unincorporated town in New Jersey in the seventies. Like th- it's just the this whole. This is two thousand two. Like, the whole town. This comes is two thousand two. Branded. Uh, same gotta, difference. I mean, what happened? The mil- Millennium Edition just came out. You gotta, you gotta watch. You gotta, you gotta keep track of your own stories, Brandon. Of 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 the yeah. dates, yeah, yeah, baby. I'm listen, man. I'm living. She's getting a second tooth in and has a double ear infection, so I I just live off uh, McRiddles and Red Bull. Oh, McRiddles so, are great. They're oh. so good. Best best thing ever created. You put the syrup inside of the bun, but also the bun is pancakes. They're pretty good. Although I've been. It's I've genius. been super on the uh, everything bagel, uh, double egg ham and cheese from uh, uh, Quick Check lately. It's been the Quick Check, very good. The Quick Check uh, Red Bull uh, collab smoothie thing, delicious. Um, but if you want to uh, make your life much better, you can buy just straight up everything bagel seasoning and just throw that shit on everything you want. That sounds like a path towards. You, that sounds like a path towards diabetes. Yeah, but, I mean, what isn't anymore? Um, <clears throat> there, before their eyes, lay a living legend, the infamous Grigstown Cow. Uh, most had only heard of him, some claimed to have seen him, while others always dismissed his very existence. But on that rainy November day, he could no longer be denied. The hefty, weather-beaten old black-and-white bull lay horizontal on the ground, 
for all to see. Um, also, does somebody help it? <laughs> I mean, listen. Listen. You don't get to see much in this area, so, like, you're gonna, like, just look at that cow. Although I say that, and they're, like, they're, like, a kind of short drive away from Trenton and a short drive away, a short drive, like a slightly longer drive away from Philly. But then again, who the fuck wants to go to Philly? I have, I'm sorry, I mean, people who want, live in you, Philly. You I just have to, an irrational hatred of Philly. You can get a cheesesteak there. I don't like the state because I didn't realize when I used to have to commute there for work that um, pizzas were, were all personal mm-hmm. pizzas. So, like, when someone wanted, like, to, it was just so confusing when people were saying, oh, you want to get a pizza? You go, oh, yeah, sure. And then they ask, there's three people, and you're, you're like, it's like, why is everyone ordering it? Like, there's so much pizza. And then you get it, and you're like, oh, it's so see, see, sad and The thing small. is, the, by doing personal pizzas, um, they save money because a, a, a like, slightly skinnier, like, a, a, a pizza with less circumference, less radius way cheaper to make than a pizza that's just a single large it's just facts yeah yeah but you can't you the personal pizza robs the consumer of the like half asleep slash half drunk midnight fridge pizza that you just like throw hot sauce and garlic powder on yeah i mean and then it just i have a bad habit of just buying single slices because um i like the you can't. You have to buy a, a a large chicken bacon ranch, eat two pieces, and then just have it live in your fridge. And it that's just your meals for the next three days. Yeah, Brandon. Yeah, okay. that's that's the tech. Okay, that's okay. what you have to do. Because like I usually get fancy slices, and I can't really get a. What's like, fancy? Like barbecue chicken pizza, and I had mac and cheese pizza once, and that was fucking delicious. Yeah. What? I feel like that I'm not going to comment on the nutritional value of pizza because it's pizza, so the points moot no matter what, but that doesn't seem... <laughs> Don't judge me. <laughs> Get back to this fucking cow that's <clears throat> lying dead on the ground, maybe. It's not dead yet. They're watching the life slowly drain from this hot. beast. Um, after quick exa- <laughs> hot. quick examination, it was determined that the animal was not injured, but instead simply exhausted. Uh, the gathering onlookers uh, were determined to pull the bull up the hill um, and to get him back up and on his feet and send him on his way. All hoped the Grigstown cow would survive this mishap, uh, and the beloved local legend would live on to amuse future uh, generations of skeptics. The existence of the most famous slash infamous Grigstown cow was at least verified, documented, and sadly now could be laid to rest. Despite the valiant and combined efforts of all, uh, the beloved cow simply, it was just too old and too weak to go on. It, it was, it was just. It also hasn't been shitting for, for 30 years. It hasn't shit for 30 years. It was old and fell down a ravine. It just filled with poop. Just filled. That's why they couldn't move it up the Phil. hill. Uh, after mm-hmm. passing some 48 plus hours uh, in the very spot where his rescuers had left him, the independent bull was too tired and arthritic to budge. Uh, just, at, just, just kill it. At that point, just, just put a bolt. Get a bolt. Get an air just gun. Gather all the kids around. Let them watch. Um, give them something. You know, to talk to their therapist about. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, it was apparent that the old guy was suffering, and so a veterinarian was called to poorly assess the bull's state of health. A doctor arrived on the scene Properly. and confirmed that the animal was quite advanced in years, suffering, and on his very last legs. With a heavy heart, it was agreed that euthanizing him was the proper and most humane course of action to follow. An injection was administered, and it slowly the, quote, wild cow of Grigstown, unquote, peacefully closed its eyes for the last time. Uh, he was laid to rest in the area he wandered not far from Grigstown Lock, in the floodplain uh, where he called home. Uh, it's some say for over 30 years. Don't bury anyone on a floodplain. I'm just going to say well, that. that's that's basically what happened in New Orleans, and we all know what happened there. Yeah. <laughs> just don't. There's going to get a storm, and then they're, they're, someone's just going to have a bunch of bones in there. The least interesting question for a podcast ever. How'd you fare uh, the other day? With what? With the, the tornado. I don't even remember. I didn't even... 
nothing even happened. All right, yeah, er Erica and Pico both slept through it. I, I, it's, what, when did it happen? Uh, like two days ago. Two days ago? Oh, yeah. well, I've, I started exercising again, so I was dead. <laughs> so, Fair. so I, that, like, I could have been picked up by the tornado and not noticed it. That we, my property was fine. My, my neighbor, the whole yard is fucked. <laughs> like, like it literally threw potted plants like that were in the backyard, like the big pots. You know, blew uh, the whole can canopy they had is all like the. I don't think it. I don't think it, it made it rough. my as far south as I am. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Are you south? You're south yeah. of me. Yeah, Brandon. Brandon. I have to get a compass. You have to. You have to think about like the direction of the of of the Hudson River. If you go to Albany, you're not going towards me. The Hudson River is that way. So what direction? You're in the direction of the river. I'm. The I'm. River, river goes I'm south. On, it goes north and south. Both. Yeah. It actually oh, does. Man, it actually does next? flow both ways because it has tidal action. So. Oh. Yeah, that's why it was called the river that flows two ways. Fun. <laughs> uh, now you know the uh, things that I learned as a student in elementary school <laughs> of, at Kingston. <laughs> My elementary school's now a police station. Um, that's true. <laughs> yeah, that's right. The New Jersey, the state of New Jersey, has killed a ghost via lethal injection. I mean, um, that's probably the best thing to do. And end of Grigstown Cow. I just love that. That's a thing. Like they kill the ghost via lethal injection. Um, <clears throat> so next, this is going to be a grab bag of like various ghost uh, bovine. Mm -hmm. um, we shall travel to West Virginia University to continue our beefy bloviation. Beefy bloviation. Uh, yeah. Were you proud of that when you wrote it? I was having some... I, I, there's some alliteration okay. in here. There's, I had... I, I wasn't having the most... It was interesting, but hard finding anything really on ghost cows, so I just had fun playing with uh, words. Yeah, I see that. Uh, at West Virginia University, one of the campus's oldest buildings has been shut off from the public. Uh, some students who walk past it over sw uh, over the years swear they hear a ghost. Uh, West Vir Is it like making a moaning sound? Because that just might be freshman fucking. That? Nice. Nice. Go check the photo room. Uh, West Virginia University, located in a Morgantown, located in Morgantown, was founded in 1867, immediately following the fall of the Confederacy at the end of the Civil War. Hmm. Um, not long after, in the 1870s, a college prank gone horribly wrong supposedly occurred in its Woodburn Hall uh, clock tower. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna take a guess. I haven't read ahead. They they moved a cow up the stairs, and because cows can't climb downstairs, it just died up there. May, duh, may, um, uh, 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 maybe. Okay. <laughs> we'll see. Um, it still haunts the campus to this day. Uh, let to, to be fair, it's better than what's happened in other clock towers. Are, should I know a clock tower that you're referencing? I'm not going to go into much depth, but bad things have happened. Historically, clock towers on college campuses not associated with good events. Oh, uh, I think I know where this is going. Um, it was a really bad and tasteless joke. I see. I think. Mm -hmm. I think I know the. Eh, uh, the legend has it that some of the school. At the very least, there weren't a uh, hand hand dispenser, like a uh, hand sanitizer dispensers on campus at that time. No. <laughs> the. The. Oh, I'm gonna. I'm gonna hold back on making any jokes. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's fair. Yes. That's fair. I, uh, uh, I, know, I had a few <laughs> bangers pop up in my head, but I'm gonna I'm gonna hold those. <laughs> those. That's probably for the best, Brandon. I, I'm working on improving my inside thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> uh, legend has it that some of the school's first students took a cow from a farm owned by the university and led it up the tower. Uh, uh, sorry, and led it up to the top of the tower for the whole student body to see. Once the cow was in the bell tower, it proceeded to moo and uh and beller like there was no tomorrow. Beller. It was they said the an article set called <laughs> Beller. <laughs> bell, 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 bell. <laughs> cow, 
Cow. It's a Pokemon. Cow. 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 Uh, <clears throat> and caused no end of the to the uh, the be- amusement of the campus's students, staff, and faculty. Not knowing what to do, they spent several hours trying to remove it. Uh, unfortunately, the cow from uh, the real tower without success. They just couldn't get it out. Um, they should have just gotten a sled. The students' cows love sleds. Well, because you just put the cl- cow on the sled, and then you just like push it down the stairs. Yeah, you give it... Uh, I don't know. I, I was trying to think of a cow-related candy. Cowtails. And uh, lead it down the stairs. Uh, the students... Monster. Not knowing, those are delicious, by the way. Um, not knowing that cows couldn't walk downstairs, didn't plan on how to get it down. According to the legends, they were forced to kill the cow, chop up its body, and walk down the pieces from the bell tower one at a time. Uh, oh, I doubt they walked them down. They threw those fucking pieces over the edge of the bell tower. Oh, you, you know that's what they did. They just you know that's what they did. They them over. When was this? When was this? 1867? That's what they yeah, did. Yeah, they fucking they did They set that. up a target and did. tossed the cow body parts over mm-hmm. the tower. Uh, questioning something, I went to the Encyclopedia Britannica and found this. Um... It's a common belief that cows are unable to walk downstairs. Many people think that you can get a cow upstairs, but getting it back down isn't going to happen without any pretty, without being pretty creative. Um, but this is there. Is there actually any truth to this? To put it simply, uh, it is very difficult for cows to walk downstairs. Although at first the notion may seem ridiculous, cows' inability to complete this uh, seemingly simple feat actually makes quite a bit of sense. Cows struggling with walking downstairs because the incline and structure of stairs are not found in nature and are tailored for human leg pr- and proportions. Um, the average slope of a staircase is 35 degrees, so we humans couldn't walk down it without a second thought. Cows, on the other hand, have a very uh, much different weight distribution and bone structure than we do, um, so it's difficult for them to move in the same manner. Um, I mean... But horses do it fine because if you if you actually know about horses, horses are like mountainous creatures. It's because horses are too dumb to know that they shouldn't be able to, so they can just do it. Well, well, horses also are like like you know how we, you know how how you have to like get a farrier to clip the horse's nails, yeah. the horse's hooves, effectively, um, and like you shoe them with horn like like a, a horseshoe, yeah. Uh, the reason that is is because we don't use horses on rough enough terrain as they would naturally. So if you like naturally, they're they're very rough and tumble, like the type of terrain that they use. So it it wears down their hooves in nature. So, but in real life, we need the we need the uh, the horseshoes and the like clipping to deal with the fact that they're not like walking on rocks all the time. Yeah. There's the weirdest thing is I get um, YouTube recommendations for um, for, for the, watching like horse reshawing and like farrier work and all that all the time and if yeah. I've never watched Why? a single one I've never watched one and I get at least two times a week like it shows up in the like recommended for you stuff and I'm like why I've literally that, never watched it that's so weird because like I've my family has horses has had horses. And I've never seen one of those fucking videos. Yeah. And I get that all the time. I don't know why. Weird. Very odd. Um, when you think about it, anything as massive as a cow would have uh, a difficult time going downhill at a slope of 35 degrees. With the average cow weighing anywhere from 1,600 to 2,400 pounds based on gender and breed, uh, the animal's fear of walking downstairs seems pretty rational. And uh, cow's necks are also far less mobile than ours. So when tilted that far mm. forward, it becomes d- difficult to see straight ahead, something that they instinctively want to avoid. Uh, while cows can't look up. won't walk, cows can't look up. Let's go to the. Uh, what is, is it? Is it pigs or dogs? Dogs. That the the dogs. Yeah, and then okay. you go to the Winchester and wait for it all to blow over. Um, while the cows uh, won't walk downstairs on their own, it has been proven that cows will walk downstairs if you force them to. So yes. <clears throat> cows can walk down sca- stairs. They just avoid the situation as much as possible as they are not evolutionarily prepared for such a steep slope in uh forward leg movements. Um mm. so on It's like it's like me exercising. You, like like you exercising, yes. So they I can. I can. I just don't. So if if the the that 
ghost cow ever did happen, that does mean that they just decided to murder a cow because they felt like it instead of pushing it. I I want to just say that murdering a cow, probably not the worst sin that a group of college students have done. Especially Actually, in the 1800s. Ex- explicitly the least terrible thing that a group of college students have done for a prank in the 1800s. Yeah. <laughs> Um, Cause keep in mind, this is this is just after the Confederacy too. Yeah. So some of those college students probably had some pretty fucking terrible takes. There's there's a lot of yeah. Um, just not great. <laughs> so if they kill a cow, probably not the worst thing that they could have been doing. No, there's. An infinite number of terrible things that they could have been... Shit, there's been worse college pranks that happened in the last couple of years than uh, cow murders. Um, Honestly, there's there's worse there's worse uh, college pranks, uh, high school pranks that happened at our high school, I feel like. <laughs> Except the one that Mark did. That was a pretty he just good made one. The, he just made the campus better. Yeah. That's so funny. Yeah. he uh, For reference... Oh, yeah, he, he put a tractor tire around a lamppost and then filled it with dirt and put nice plants in it. Mm-hmm. Like, that is the whole thing. It's some some prank. Great prank. Thanks for the free planter, bro. You really got us. Yeah. <laughs> you beautified the campus. <laughs> oh, no. What are we going to do? I still remember the, uh, the whoopee cushion. That was an actually good prank that he did. That fucking whoopee cushion. <laughs> I I think it was the literal first time in human history that a whoopee cushion worked. Successfully. And and to fill out uh-huh. uh, I know what we're talking about. We were playing a, a session of the Dungeons and the Dragons. And um mm-hmm. was it you or was it someone else that went to go to the bathroom? It was it was me. Well, I went I think I went to grab something from the kitchen. Yeah, so y- y- and it was in my parents' house at the time. Yeah. And I walked away, I come back, and I just, like, plop down, I don't look, and it's just like, (laughs) and I'm like, what? (laughs) It was a moment of stunned silence when the the whoopee cushion went off, because it was so good. uh, I... Here's the thing, though. He had it locked and loaded the entire session because we didn't really see him put it there. So it had to have been already inflated and him just waiting. (laughs) He just had it in, like, his 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 shirt. Yeah. And he was just waiting to deploy it. Yeah. Like, there's... John, like, he entered your house with it ready to go. Inflated (laughs) with an inflated whoopee cushion. What a fucking long con. <laughs> so worth it, though. And, like, then there's just the shock of, like, we just witnessed a real, like, an actual whoopee cushion working as intended. Mm-hmm. Oh. I mean, to be fair, given my history, uh, it could have also... For all you know, it could have been the whoopee cushion not working and me just actually farting. Oh, I'm sure if we just waited five minutes, it would have been <laughs> happened anyway. Yeah, yeah. You would have gotten the noise regardless. Yeah. Uh, so our, our last, uh, bovine bastard is the ghost cow of Cambria County. Um, there was a building that locals reportedly were afraid to go near. Uh, it had been abandoned, uh, for years and gained the attention of, uh, or sorry, gained attention in 1896. This building, interestingly enough, uh, the DMV. was used to be used as the slaughterhouse. DMV I had to go to the other day? Surprisingly easy. Oh, the Kingston DMV is not bad. It I had no appointment, so I got a I got a, a woo new whip. Um, and yeah, and but- what I didn't know is that uh, they're replacing all the license. You can't have the yellow license plates anymore. You have to have the new ones because they're really shitty. <laughs> yeah, because the paint peels off, so they like you have to get yeah. switch back to the normal ones. Um, yeah, so you have to get new plates. And also, you have to replace your plates same or turn in your plates same day. You cannot because mm. it used to be you had like a week or whatever, like just get it done eventually. Oh, so like uh, 
And I went in the middle of, I left work in the middle of the day to go do this. So I was like, I have to go to the DMV in the middle of work day. I thought it was going to be there forever. But I just walked in holding license plates. And there's just a guy and you just drop them in. A, you put them in a folder and drop them in a box with a dollar and leave. That's it. Is there for less than like the parking guy? Just the security guard was just like, I'm not gonna charge you. <laughs> he was like, you were barely here. The um, uh, that reminds me. The uh, when I got in my car accident, uh, I had to, to take the plates off, but yeah. I uh, I didn't bring a ratchet. Oh, right. good for you. I, I I brought I brought a screwdriver. And I had to pry the back plates off because they were ratcheted. They were bolted in yeah. with no with no screws. And I didn't realize that. Meanwhile, I was in a junkyard and I'm like 90% sure there was a junkyard dog there. Oh, junkyard dogs are cool. They, uh, yeah. the, the DMV one is turning in my old car. Or not, sorry, the Toyota one is turning in my old car. <clears throat> they, uh... There's no accident history on the car because I've never told anyone about anything that's ever <laughs> happened to it. Yeah, but when I th- I had to get new plates, mm-hmm. so they when they pulled the plates off and they set them on the counter, the guy who comes and he's like, "Those are pretty dented plates," and it's like, I don't know, I don't know how that happened. They, they, someone kicked them. Yes, yeah, someone someone kicked them. But I wasn't too worried anyway because uh, <clears throat> I went to hand in my remote start for the car, and he was like, "What what's this?" And I was like, it's the remote start because they also unlock your car so you can you can start it and get into the car so i was like you know you know i don't want you to think i'm gonna sneak onto your property at night and then the guy literally left and he's like we don't care if it gets stolen like, <laughs> he, he was like we don't care. the car it was a 12 year old corolla that was totaled like he, he just laughed he's like we don't care <laughs> amazing <laughs> i was like all right well, honestly you'd probably it. be doing us a favor yeah then they don't have to deal with it yeah Oh, uh, the butcher, for some unknown reason, eventually ditched the building, leaving it abandoned, creating the perfect setting for a local haunted area, the abandoned slaughterhouse, or the perfect area for a um, uh, BDSM uh, shot. Uh, shout out to Hogtide. Uh, a writer named Almer Person for a local paper, uh, uh, Pennsylvania Grit, has been interviewing locals about the building. Sorry? What? <laughs> Huh, I didn't say anything. Okay, just <laughs> sure. Uh, also, described... something about a joke about uh, about Elmer and, and cow hooves. There we go. Ah, uh, yes. I did did you know, here's a fun fact, that um, the horse whinnies in Young Frankenstein, every time we say the girl's name, the uh, Frabrucher, mm-hmm. because that's the German word for glue. So they're saying the word glue, and that's why the horse panics every time they say her name. Because <coughs> that, that joke had escaped me for a very long time, and then I forget how I found out, but I went, ah, there's a lair. That motherfucker. Uh, a r- <laughs> uh, the writer had described a frightful object that appeared as a headless cow, blood flowing th- from its neck through a stump, and its head floating above its body. Its eyes were flames, and it had sharp teeth, which glowed like, quote, bicycle lanterns, um, which I imagine they had literal lanterns on bicycles at this point in time. I, I would assume. <laughs> I don't know what else that could be. Uh, it would bellow, and the sound would come from its neck stump. Um, at night, the cow would apparently be seen jumping around the side of the road, floating above the ground, and illuminating the immediate area. One unnamed witness described how the cow could be seen leaving the slaughterhouse and follow the road along a fence until it reached a stone wall and then turned back. Is that it? That's it. Yeah, that, that's that, it? this was a shorter one. That's I, I was uh, <laughs> couldn't get any any more. I was trying to do a themed grab bag and that that without breaking the theme. That's uh, how did you what what inspired you to look for ghost cows? By the way. I have a Google Doc that just, l- anytime I hear or read about anything at all, or come across something tangential um, while writing an episode, if, if like, an article reference, I just put it all on the sheet. So I've got, like, four or five pages of just a bunch of things, and uh, most of them probably I can't get an episode on or there's not a lot, but it's 
when I write, I just start punching stuff into Google until I come across something with meat on it and start uh, trying to come. So this one in particular, the, the Griggs Town Cow, I had written on that sheet because I, I, I must have come across it looking at something else. And then, mm-hmm. you know, I got a, a couple pages or whatever out of it, but then uh, I didn't want to end it. So I started looking for any other phantasmal cow. And uh, it turns out there's there's a there's th- there's more, but the rest are like there's a couple sentences. It ma it mood. In, in it mood it spooked me. It spooped it spoopy it's mood. Or uh, <laughs> or it's some guy gets caught fucking the cow and he gets called out. And he's like, I wasn't. It was a ghost. It was a ghost. It, it, it wasn't real. I didn't do it. I don't fuck cows. I fuck ghosts. <laughs> I n- I never stick my penis in anything tangible or corporeal. Thank you very much. Mm. I'm not that kind of fella. Ah, that's gross. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think I am? Some kind of pervert? No, I fuck ghosts. <laughs> God. Yeah, that's uh. That that voodoo uh, scroop scroops a dupes it scroops a uh, poops it up. Ghost fucking. Ghost fucking. All right. Well, I guess this is a short ghost, one this week, sex. folks. Yeah, a little bit. There, there. I, they can't all of them. Not all of them can be. Uh, I I mean, we've done a lot long. of really long ones. Listen, I I had like a bunch of options. Th- this one I was voted on. So uh, if anything, it's your fault, uh, listeners. <laughs> you picked it. <laughs> yeah, that's that's usually the way it goes to blame the people listening. That's yeah. that's usually how things go well. Yeah. Um. <laughs> anywho, uh, if you enjoyed the podcast, be sure to check out our website, CryptopediaCast.com, which is really just a bunch of links. Uh, our Instagram, CryptopediaCast. Our Twitter, at CryptopediaCast. Email us with your ideas at CryptopediaCast at gmail.com or us at CryptopediaCast.com. We have a YouTube channel. I'm not going to spell out what that is because it's like U C R L X blah 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 bit. Um, and I doubt anyone's going to want to listen to me say a a weird fucking code that was all capital U, capital C, capital R, lowercase Z, no capital L. No. <laughs> okay, we have a Patreon as well. Uh, and Brandon, why don't you thank the people who are responsible for this episode existing? Yes, the people who who take responsibility for this episode. What well, one? It, I, it was written before I put the vote in. So mm-hmm. anything I, I I is already written. Anytime there's an option to vote for it. Um, well, they they're responsible this for this episode, episode being recorded this week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If they could have chosen aliens, but they didn't, or I think that it was aliens blobs. There's a, there's a few. Um, Clay Sinclair, Marty Von Party, Bird Schneider, Jonathan Shepard, Matthew Smith, and Bushcraft Kelso. Hey, Yo. are we missing one? I think we're missing uh, Will Smith. Oh, and Will. S- oh, we are missing Will Smith. That's how long ago I wrote this one. Yeah, I, wiki, wiki. wiki 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 Will Smith Smith Smith. Boop, but there. where's Don't. DJ Jazzy Jeff? Where's DJ Jazzy Jeff? He's out jazzing some Jeff somewhere. Uh, the Bushwick Will. The, the Bushwick Will? But Bushwick Bill. He, he's got an eye patch because he lost his eyeball to a, a window accident. A window accident? Come on, man. Get, yeah, get your uh, 80s or 90s rap, rappers down. Brandon. 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 You didn't know that fucking Will Smith did rap music so i don't want to really hear had no idea i don't want to hear oh, never mind. he was in he was in the ghetto boys from 2002 to 2019 okay god damn it um i'm just checking to make sure there's <laughs> i didn't know will smith was a a a a, 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 a rippy rapper uh, oh um we're also missing uh lenwood on that list Oh, did I miss the Lenwood? Yeah, I, and, I gotta oh, check enter. to see if he's still on the, the thing, but yeah, you missed that too. Um, Lenwood Sharp and Lenwood Sharp. We're very Boom, good. Got it. We're very good at this. Oh wait, I'm usually the one who reads it on your episodes. Whatever. Um, 
It's whatever. I just have to go back through all my my uh, episode copies and make sure I update my uh, the bottom portion. Um, if you, we also have a Discord where we talk about stuff. We got two new members who didn't leave immediately. So hey, that's a thing. Hey, you didn't leave. That's uh, you did it. Good, good for you. There's still people leave. Like don't didn't don't we have it set up so you have to answer a question? Like you know this is no that's cryptid. That's and, that's the, oh that's the Facebook that's the group. Facebook group that I don't do anything in anymore. Um, if you enjoy the podcast, be sure to rate, review, subscribe wherever you find it. Um, if you have any monster requests or stories, be sure to ask for them. I guess we might do them. There's a few taboo yeah, ones. Submit them, but I'm not going to say which can. ones are taboo. If we can do them, we'll do them. If we can't, there's been some uh, unfortunate additions to Netflix recently, uh, including Skinwalker Ranch. I tried to watch that show. And it hurt my soul to watch it. There's, if anyone's interested in in Skinwalker Ranch, uh, ep- we've got two episodes. Also, also, they're incredibly like they're so wrong. Like, yeah, the, like the things that they're saying on the episodes are so incredibly wrong. Like the, the crazy wrong. So it's it's uh, episodes nineteen and twenty one. And it covers, like, what, you know, the Skinwalker Ranch TV show is about. And then episode two is what actual Skinwalkers are. And also in one of those, we cover the actual guy that bought Skinwalker Ranch. And he's a hotel, like, guy owner. Yeah. And, like, he bought it because he sucks. And then he just, like, sucks at doing space stuff because he was trying to make, like, like, different versions of the Soryu's for cheaper. But he sucked at it. But he had to try to make some money back somehow. So Skinwalker Ranch. Well, he sold Skinwalker Ranch, um, and then the people who he sold the two other ones who were making the TV show. Yeah, but um, fun. but yeah, no, <laughs> they uh, they get like everything about the local indigenous groups like entirely wrong. Like, yeah. I don't know how to articulate how wrong they are about the, like what's going on, but they are. Because also, yeah. if you want to watch, a sh- yeah. Also, they make assumptions about how native populations exist in areas uh, that make no fucking sense. Because you see, because you see, uh, Native Americans did not stay fixed to one location for a long enough period of time for it to ma- it to like manifest in the way that they're talking about. And if yeah. they did, it's because white people forced them onto a reservation. What? We would never do such a thing. Yeah. Yeah. The uh, If you want to see a, a show that does treat the native culture uh, really well and is really good, go check out Reservation Dogs on Hulu. Pretty good. Highly recommend it. Um, Brandon, why don't you give us your plugs? You could find me on Instagram at donkey underscore hands. My website is boyerb.com. My email is brandon at cryptopediacast.com. And my Twitter is at cryptobrandon. On Instagram, I'm at Mew2057. My Twitter is at JF Tunham. My website is John Dunham Games. My email is at John at CryptopediaCast.com. I also have a Google Scholar account. Oh, nice. Yeah. But, uh... Um, oh, you could also find me on at Heinz Canada on uh, Twitter. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, you could... Our art was done by Tom Hill. You could find him on Instagram at Thomas Michael Hill. His website is greatergloryco.com and his email is tommikehill at gmail.com. As always, I'm John. I'm Brandon. And things are weird. <laughs>